Good morning everyone, it's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Ballroom Knight Hinata, the dark single target unit, the second meta unit of the Protector of Peace team. She seems to be very, very, very necessary and strong for specifically the Protector of Peace team. Uh, her usefulness outside of that, I think, will dwindle drastically, but that's what we're here to find out. She is dark, she is physical, she's also on Shiz's Will and Commander. Commander, which is physical-focused, uh, so you can get there. Crit, not really a thing that they're looking for, but, yeah, we'll try it. And then Shiz's Will doesn't have a team. She uses a Dark Fist, which, you, there's a lot of characters that use the Dark Fist, so it's pretty easy to rip one off and give it to her. She is a single target alt with no additional effect. Her first skill for 80 points gives all allies a physical attack buff for 70%, so that only applies to physical units that are going to need it. And then lowers crit resistance by 50%, and this is universal. Everybody gets crit resistance down. But if you use 300 skill points in the turn, just like Dark Soe from Ogre's Pride last meta, where he had 50% synergy power, and if you use 300 points, you got 100% synergy power, Hinata does the same thing, except it's crit. So crit resistance 50, 300 points used in a turn, it becomes 100% crit resistance down, which is <laughs> very, very strong. So that is a very good skill. It's, you know, this part is limited to physical allies, but again, she's on commander. They can use this, even if you don't have Overlord Shizu, or not Overlord Shizu, but Commander Shizu. You can still get a physical attack buff on there. And then the crit resistance, I mean, even if you're on a stage where they don't really necessarily want you to crit, if you lower it by 100%, you're pretty much guaranteed to do at least normal crit damage and not have it nerfed at all. If not, just have it be better, because they only have 80% or something. So this, I think, is a fairly good skill, and that can be used because it is universal, right? There is no only for Protectors of Peace physical attack 70% or only... <clears throat> This isn't, like, crit damage only for Protectors of Peace. I do like this skill because it is mostly unrestricted. You do need to use 300 skill points to use it at max, which is locked to stacking teams. You do need to have a physical team, but otherwise, I think it's fine. It doesn't have any stupid limited force restrictions, which is what we don't like. Her second skill applies the multi-hit state to green orb soul of skills, adding two additional hits. This is to help Masayuki get more of his 40% per turn buff activated. It won't get you the 40%, it'll get you 24 of that, but it's still helping us stack more attack with Masayuki. So this skill is very much necessary if you want to use Masayuki in any way, shape, or form. And then, as an added bonus, she does permanently stack alt damage by 10% for everybody. So overall, I, I think she's a good character, but this skill right here is only for Masayuki, and Masayuki needs this Hinata. Like, it's, it's not debatable. He needs her. So, kind of unfortunate there. Valor trait nerfs blue gauge, not a big deal. If you happen to pull dupes of Hinata, she does have turn 2 protection trait, which is very, very strong. Uh, not a lot of dark characters have turn 2, if any. So, if you get a dupe of her by chance, by luck, this is going to be very good for you moving forward into the future. But let's go ahead and put her on the team and see how much she helps out. Alright, we're going to put her on the Protectors of Peace team as a, as I'm running it right now. Masayuki, subslot Watermelon, because Rimuru is water, and her crit resistance down trait does help out. It will add on top of Hinata's own crit resistance down. We've got Momiji, Guaranteed Pierce, Guaranteed Synergy, Synergy Resistance Down, just helps Rimuru do a butt-ton more damage. Geld, we're running Lumi and Space Milum in support slots to give us extra 15 points, to, or enough points to start and use Geld's Orb Change and Green Buff. Hinata obviously is here for her buffs. Overlord Shizu, still the only triple alt swapper for greens. I assume that the final meta unit for this is also going to have at least some kind of alt swap to replace this Shizu. Uh, hope is a key word, though. And then Rimuru is our damage dealer. Okay, so starting off, we have a good turn two. 
Hinata, because she is on Protectors of Peace, will be able to participate in the specific Geld orb change. So he is only changing Protectors of Peace. I had Shizu in that slot previously. Now it's Hinata. If Shizu was still up front, we would not change this blue orb. So, more importantly, we have points to use the multi-hit state for the greens. So this will add two hits to each orb, which means that we are effectively sending 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18 hits against the target. And based on Masayuki's skill, every time you hit an enemy three times, you get a permanent 4% attack buff. So, 3 times, or 18 divided by 3. Alright, what is that? Math is hard. Eventually, you'll find out that if we use this multi-target state, we can get an extra 24% damage on ourself. So, we look at Rimuru, he currently has 20% attack. Alright, well let's use the multi-hit state, let's use the single orb change for Rimuru, that will just change one of them, hopefully it changes Geld. Alright, perfect. We'll use Masayuki, we will reset Geld's orb changes and his green buff, and because Hinata is on the force, we will be able to change this orb now. And then we can see the glowing. If you hold down on the orb, it'll say the multi-hit state, turns remaining, and we'll go ahead and send these... Uh, okay, almost there. And you can see now that we're doing three hits. You see little tiny numbers pop up. It is very fast, but just know that it's there. So he guarded one of the tiny hits. But after the Inspire uh, state kicks in at the end of the turn, we will now check Rimuru, and he's going to be up another 24% attack up to 44. We started at 20, now we're at 44. And this is where Masayuki really, really needs Hinata. Because if we had just sent six green orbs, we would have gotten an 8% attack. 8%, in case you didn't know, is not as much as 24% attack. And also, if you didn't know, most of the normal protectors that stack attack are doing it at 12% every time. So we are effectively doubling that effect now by just simply bringing Hinata and using this skill. Meanwhile, we are getting extra alt damage, so we can check Rimuru's orb right here, and he has 10% right there. Alright, well if we use this again, it's going to give the multi-hit state to greens, and then we check Rimuru, and it's now up to 20%. Excellent! So, let's single orb change again, and then let's double orb change, and then we'll bring in... Shizu for Hinata. If I had dupes in Hinata, we would be also getting an extra uh, protection gauge, which would be really, really helpful. But I don't have a dupe in her right now. I probably will put a dupe in her later on. But here, we're going to get another 24% attack because we're sending six greens. They have the multi-hit state. And we know based on the last turn that we get 24% in the most perfect scenario. Masayuki's cap is 40, though, so we're still missing something to help us get to that 40% cap if they want to actually make that a thing. But if we check Rimuru now, we are now up to 68%. 24 and 24 plus 20, 68%. So by stacking 24% attack, we are going to get to a very, very high attack stat by turn 8 when we're ready to nuke. So now, we're going to do that, and we're going to come back on turn 8. Okay, we are back now on turn 8, the nuking turn, and we have 400 skill points, and we need to use 300 in order to activate Hinata's full power. So we're going to use Overlord Shizu's buff, 80 points right there, boom. That's weakness strike and alt resistance down. We'll then bring in Momiji for Shizu. And we'll use both of her skills, which is Synergy Rate and Synergy Resistance down, and then Guaranteed Pierce for everybody. The Fire Attack means nothing because it's only for Momiji, but it is another 160 points that we can use. And then we'll bring Geld in for Funzy Onesies. And then we'll use Rimuru's buff. Boom. And then now that we've used 320 points... Hinata is now at a 70% physical buff and 100% crit resistance down because we've used more than 300 skill points in this turn. So, with this amount of damage coming out, we are about to do some crazy, 
crazy things with Rimuru. So I pulled up what I used and showed off for EX2 of this same beatdown battle. This is now Inferno 1, so they have more HP and more stats. Not a lot of stats increase, because it's not that much of a jump, but they definitely have more HP. And this is the team that I used. Masayuki, Geld, Rimuru, Shizu. Um, Lumi is doing the job that Hinata is now doing, essentially, for her buff. Because Lumi gave physical buff and crit resistance down. Just not as much. So we've replaced Lumi with the new Hinata. And then Mirai is giving us the extra live mode attack buff, which is another... Mm, 12% attack on a six hand of greens. So it is going to be comparable to the amount of attack that Rimuru now has, which is 164%. And this is purely because every single turn from turn two until now, we have used the multi hit state from Hinata, which means that we're getting 24% extra attack every single turn up until now. So Rimuru, on top of having his own personal alt damage buff, 150, he has 60% extra alt damage from using that Hinata skill six turns in a row, and then he's got a ridiculously high attack stat, he's got 70% weakness strike from his own orb change, he's got 100% weakness strike from Shizu, guaranteed synergy, pierce, and, uh, from Momiji, and then we've got the guaranteed crits from himself, and the 70% physical attack also from Hinata. But then on the other side, weakness resistance down from Geld, defense down from the trait, 50% alt down from Shizu, synergy down from Momiji, and 100% crit resistance down from Hinata herself. Now Hinata, we're going to nuke with her first because she is the showcase character. She does not have as much because she's not participating in Rimuru's selfish alt buff. So she's only at 60% alt. So she's not going to hit nearly as hard. But for reference, this team, when I nuked, did 3.5 to 4 million damage on EX2, a lower difficulty stage. Let's see how much we do here. So let's send uh, Hinata against Mirren, and then we'll nuke with Rimuru and, and call it a day. So Hinata, his, her ult looks kind of funny. <laughs> I saw someone, uh, one of the JP players on Twitter, saying she, she has the... Uh, ODM gear from Attack on Titan, essentially. <laughs> it's not quite the same, but it is kind of funny still. She's just... She's Batman. And then she's got some Iron Man Wrist Blaster. She does 4 million. That's pretty good. What does Rimuru do? 4 million. We've already eclipsed what Rimuru did with his own AoE, who had the extra ult buff, right? So Hinata did that herself. But Rimuru's festive bombardment now is doing how much damage? Question mark? Oh, 11.9 and 13.9 million damage. 13.9 against Adelin because he had the extra weakness resistance down from the Geld skill, where we did 4 million last time. Oh, 10 million damage. You know, that's certainly something now, isn't it? That's certainly something. And this is purely because, one, Hinata has a very, very strong buff for this team in her first skill, and her second skill enables you to get that extra massive 24% attack from Masayuki for six turns in a row, which just helps Rimuru out a lot. And it technically helps Hinata out too, because she's also participating in that. It's not like it's only for Rimuru, it's for everybody that's getting a physical, or it's a physical ally. Hinata will participate. Geld technically would as well. So she enables Rimuru with Masayuki specifically to do very, very good numbers in damage. But that's really the only place that we're really going to see it useful. Okay, I'm really glad that we have another beatdown active that is green focused because it's not like Hinata is useless off of the Protector of Peace team. She still can support because her buffs again, are unrestricted for the most part. You are going to want to run a physical team, but the uh, World of Fantasy team is physical focused, is green orb focused, and while she is quite expensive, if this is going, to, if Hinata is going to be your primary source of damage, then Milam will work very well here with the type advantage and everything, and she is a crit focused character. So her having crit damage alongside Hin uh, Hinata's crit resistance down means that we will hit very, very hard, 
even if we are unable to actually max out her skill, because this team is just physically unable to do 300 points in a turn. At most, you can do 180, which is not enough. But it is green-focused, physical, and crit-based, so she will have some use here. Actually, a lot of use. Okay, so the name of the game here is using a number of skills very, very quickly to help Milam build up crit damage. Uh, Hinata will only be able to help a little bit with her 25-point skill. Obviously, her 80-point is out of the question until we're ready to nuke, but we can orb change here, boom, boom, and then get this kind of out of the way early. And then once we are ready to nuke with Milam, hopefully we have at least 100 plus the extra 40 from Frey, that means that we will have enough points to use both the 80-point skill and Milam's 25-point buff. So as long as things go our way and we can get maybe some extra orbs for Milam and maybe not a counter, uh, this, in theory, should work. So let's use another Shizu orb change that leaves us with 50 points. Let's do the green buff with Veldora. So we'll take out the hero, I guess. And that'll give us the massive green buff. And then on top of that, we will use the multi-hit state for green orbs, because we are running a green team and Frey is going to change these two orbs, and also give us 40 points, which is cool, because that allows us to now start using some stacks of the uh, Shizu 15% buff, which does not hit Hinata, but that doesn't, doesn't need to hit Hinata either. We just want an EX alt, but we can see that we're taking off chunks because of this multi-hit attack. Boom, 44... 11.4k right there. That, oh, that's a lot of damage. Uh, Mila might die here, unfortunately. So if she does, we will just uh, make a cut and come back when we are ready to nuke. It's going to be really, really unfortunate if she does die. But there's not really much we can do about that if she gets countered. Because this uh, Chaos Freak, I think is what his name is, he always targets the person with the lowest HP, so if you take a random counter, that unit is now going to be attacked forever. But let's use the multi-hit again. Frey will give us another 40 points. And then we've already used the second attack stack from Shizu. Yeah, we already did that. So another orb change for Milim. Just stacking it up, and we'll see if she survives this or not. Because if not, then we're if she does live, then we're ready to go. And if she dies, well, that's unfortunate. But, I mean, this is Inferno 3. He's already down under half HP, and we haven't really done anything except send orbs. Uh, please don't die, please don't die. Oh, thank god. Okay. We are ready to go. So this is turn 4. We will bring... No, actually, no. We'll use Hanada now. So 70% physical attack, 50% crit resistance down. Again, there's nothing we can do about that to make the crit resistance go any higher. We physically do not have the points for it. And then we will use Frey to give Milan the guaranteed crit rate. I need to turn that off. Oh well. But now we have an extra 60 points, which means we can use the elemental resistance down and then the crit damage buff. 58% plus a 30% attack buff. So this Milan is going to hit fairly hard. Not only are we getting the physical buff and the crit resistance, but we are getting a couple little bit from the multi-hit state from Hinata. 20% alt damage, plus 8% on the charm. So it, it, we are helping Milam quite a bit in damage. And I I kind of want to send this one orb. I'm kind of afraid it'll just kill him. Uh, no, I, th I think we can send the one orb. All right. 162. That was a lot of damage for her. Okay. All right. Uh, Milam, we can just skip this. 887. That, I mean, that I think that's fairly good. Could it be higher? I mean, yeah, sure. We could use another combination of cheaper buffs that might do a little better, like Tempest Lead Benny Mario or something. But that's still good damage, and Hinata works very well on this team, even though she is kind of expensive. So she does have use outside of the popular or Protectors of Peace team. It's just you're really going to have to push yourself for it. Okay, I think we can call it there. They're just... There aren't a lot of specifically green physical teams that I can use, right? Because if we look at the protectors and we look at the list, Goddess of Destiny is magic. 
uh, fray we just used. Vengeance is magic and defensive focus, so we don't need big time buffs like what Hinata is giving. Uh, Masayuki, you know, that's the meta she's meant to be run there. Idol Rimuru, Overlord Rimuru, these are both magic focused teams. More so Idol Rimuru because he's stacking magic attack every time you use him. You can make a physical team with Overlord Rimuru. It, like, it's entirely possible to do so as long as you have a bunch of green orb changers. It's just that he's giving those extra passive stats to magic characters. And also, he's a collab character, so if you don't have him, then uh, you should just ignore his existence, unfortunately. And then Vengeance Velzard, she's magic-focused. You know, Guy and Milim and the hero are all magic. She can work, though, technically, in certain scenarios. If you want to build a, a burst physical team around her, we've done it before in Jubilee, so it's not out of the realm of possibility, but as far as dedicated physical green teams that are stacking that will allow you to use 300 skill points in one turn, it's pretty much just Masayuki and Overlord Rimuru. Because Idol Rimuru is stacking Magic Attack, Goss of Destiny is capped at 100, World Fantasy is capped at 180, Vengeance doesn't need it, and then, you know, all the way down here, uh, Dark Veldora, he's giving magic buffs as well, like every when you use him. So he doesn't want a physical team at all in order to use Veldora to his, his highest potential. So we have two, maybe three, team, three teams that can really... Well, two teams that can take full advantage of her, and one team, two teams that can use her to 75% effectiveness is what I'm going to say. It's not a lot of use case for Hinata right now, which is kind of unfortunate and just shows that we don't have, we have a lot of blue stacking teams and not a lot of green stacking teams. In the future, if we continue to get teams of physical green stacking nature, this Hinata will have a lot more relevancy, but right stat now, she's kind of limited to the one Masayuki-led team. And if you don't have Masayuki, then this second skill is useless and stupid. But if you have this Hinata, and, uh, or if you have Masayuki and no Hinata, then Masayuki is always going to be in a bad state because you could never get more than 8% attack per turn, while this Hinata would help you get 24%. So he really, really needs her to become more effective as a leading character to begin with. So she's on a single feature unit banner. Her featured EX characters are shit next to her. She's only good on a couple teams that you may or may not have. One of which is being led by a character you can never get again. So I, I just don't see a lot of use for Hinata right now. She will come back in the future on another banner as a side featured character. And I think that's the best place where you can pick her up. I don't think it's a smart idea to summon now. Especially again since the anniversary is literally counting down the days. The 28th, it is currently the 8th of September. The 28th of October is what we're looking for. So you shouldn't be summoning on single featured unit banners this close to the anniversary to begin with, whether or not it's Hanada. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Am I being too harsh on her? Does she have a lot more use than what I'm thinking of? And you can bastardize some teams to make it fit? I don't know. Let me know in the comments, but that's it for me guys. Take it easy and I will see you all later.